It's great to be here. Uh, so today we are going to give a uh, update on what we at Memverge have been working on. Um, in particular, we are launching today our big memory cloud uh, technology. So let me quickly uh, introduce the agenda. I'll be the first one to speak. I'm the co-founder and CEO of the company. I'll give an overview of what we mean by big, big memory cloud. And uh, after my session, Ravi, our director of uh, product solutions, will introduce one particular use case um, that is for uh, uh, how to better use a cloud spot instances to reduce the cloud cost. And after Ravi, uh, Yang, our VPO product, and Eric, our system engineer, gonna go under the hood of our technology to show how the technology works and what are all the future uh, possibilities. And Eric will also share a demo to see this technology at work. So that's the uh, agenda for the next couple of hours, uh, but I'll be the one to start uh, to give an introduction on the uh, big memory cloud. I'm gonna introduce a few keywords. Some of them you know, some of them you may have been hearing them for, for the first time. The first word I'm sure you know well is multi-cloud. And I think this has been a word that has been talked about for a long time, but in the recent couple of years, it is particularly emphasized and there's almost no controversy around it. Uh, as we know, the world is going to um, an infrastructure that's dominated by cloud service providers. And there are major cloud services such as AWS, Azure, Google, um, as well as other clouding, other geos. But there are also smaller clouds as well as on-prem data centers that's going to uh, make up this multi-cloud world that we are going into. And so why is the cloud taking over? Um, there are some fundamental uh, promises that uh, cloud infrastructure provide to the applications. Um, agility, flexibility, and scalability. Uh, it allows you to implement and deploy your application anywhere. You can stand them up, you can tear them down, you can move them around without worrying too much about the underlying uh, spinning rust. Um, and so that's a promise of cloud over the last 15 years. And that promise has been largely fulfilled for many applications. In particular, if your application is stateless, they can live really well in the cloud. They can be deployed, they can be teared down, they can be moved around, no problem. Full, perfect, ideal world. But this promise has not been fulfilled for stateful apps. So what do we mean by stateful apps? So here are some examples of the stateful apps. So these tends to be data-centric apps that are dealing with a lot of data. They're either in storage or in memory, and they're often difficult to make to be fault tolerant. That means if you interrupt an application, either by taking a cloud instance away or shutting down the server, then you lose that application and you have to restart from the beginning. And all the work that has taken place would be lost. Now, such examples are like AI ML training, EDA simulation, video rendering, uh, genomic sequencing, et cetera, et cetera. The various scientific computing or financial analysis apps, they tend to be long running. They can run for days or weeks or even months to complete a certain job. And for those type of applications, it's difficult to you know, remove an instance from underlying the application or move such an application from a cloud to cloud or move such an application from on-prem to cloud. And therefore, the true promise of agility, uh, flexibility, and scalability really cannot be met for these type of apps. And in particular, we uh, focus on three problems for these apps in the cloud. The first one is cloud cost. So uh, as all of you probably know, uh, despite all the benefits cloud provide, if you have a workload that requires a lot of resource in a, uh, in a, for a long time, cloud is not exactly cheap. And in, in some cases, it's uh, one of the big obstacles for you to move certain application from on-prem to cloud is a calculation on the cost aspect of the equation. And uh, there are some lower cost uh, instances on the cloud. Uh, one example are the spot instances. Uh, so how many of you are familiar with uh, spot instances here? Yeah, so 
it is essentially excess capacity cloud service provider have, and they make available at a deep discount to their customers. But there is a catch is that they can take it away from you anytime. Uh, if somebody is willing to pay more or somebody wants it for the on demand, they will just pull it underneath your application and uh, you know, good luck to your application. Um, and they do give you a notification, but such notification is very short, uh, ranging from 30 seconds to two minutes, often not enough for you to preserve the application state onto a persistent media and continue on from that point. So because of this catch, it is only recommended for stateless apps to use spot instances, uh, but not stateful apps. Uh, they explicitly recommend against using any stateful apps on these uh, spot instances. And therefore, you know, for these type of applications I shown in the previous slide, they really cannot use spot instances to lower their uh, cloud cost, cost problem. The second challenges in the cloud are the ability to burst. And that's a, another common use case people are looking at in terms of moving their workload into the cloud. They do have an existing setup on their on-prem that maybe have 100 servers. And uh, during normal usage, this 100 servers is enough. But there will be peak usage where the need will go beyond these 100 servers. And there's desire to move some of the workload into the cloud to leverage cloud for the, the period of peak usage. And you can come back after the peak period is over. But this is easier said than done. This is nice, you know, because you don't have to invest on extra capacity. You use it for the peak usage is exactly what cloud is good for, but it's very difficult to do for stateful apps. You know, how do you want to move all that application data into the cloud and back uh, and, and, and without a really major disruption to the applications? And that's, uh, that's not easy. And, and so that's another problem of preventing this use case uh, from uh, uh, taking place. The third problem is another, another word that we are familiar with, and this is uh, cloud locking. You know, as we are entering a multi-cloud world, I think as a customer, I like to be independent of any one particular cloud. I don't want to get into a situation where I'm locked into a particular cloud and very difficult for me to move application away from that cloud if another cloud are providing a better choice for me. I want to maintain this uh, ability to move and this ability to negotiate the price in my hand without become uh, a subject uh, to one of the major cloud service providers. Uh, but for a major <clears throat> distributed stateful apps to moving that from one cloud to another is not a simple ask. Again, there are a lot of application state. There are a lot of uh, data that you need to move and you need to do that without interrupting the running of the applications. So these are the challenges hey, that question. people, yes. This is Enrico. Hey, there we go. Uh, so uh, I agree with you up to a certain point. I mean, you know, there is a, a clean separation between compute and, and data mm -hmm. in the cloud now. So there are, storage repositories and you know uh, compute resources to access the storage repository so part of it is now solved by for example you know uh, uh, object storage or storage systems that are available in the same identical way on different cloud with replication mechanism etc that doesn't solve or even you know it's a um, can create even more problem from the cost perspective but actually, it could be, you know, it, uh, you can have persistent storage and persistent applications in the cloud by using that. Yes, you can leverage uh, various uh, storage technology, including replication technology, to solve part of the problem of, of moving persistent state in storage. But what hasn't been solved is moving the state, application state, in memory. And which is what I'm going to get into. And that's the problem we believe the big memory cloud technology actually solves. So we can provide a more complete solution to these three problems. So, so thank you for the comment, um, Enrico. And I think that really uh, naturally lead to our next couple of slides, introducing how our technology perhaps fill the gap to an overall complete solution 
uh, to these three challenges. So, so to uh, get into that, let me first explain uh, what is big memory software that we have been working on in the last four and a half years. If you have read our previous Tech Field Day, um, you know, watched our previous Tech Field Day presentation, you would know this, that we have spent the last almost five years developing a technology called big memory software. And the product is called Memory Machine. And there are essentially two key pieces of technology that we have developed. Um, and this is a software-defined memory technology that can virtualize memory here between different uh, class of memories and delivering advanced enterprise class data services. And the first such data service is what we call in-memory snapshot, zero IO in-memory snapshot. And that's a technology that can transparently capture the running state of an application at any point in time. And we can capture the application state. We can also capture all the surrounding parameters in the operating system that allow this application to be restarted anywhere, anytime. And this snapshot can be captured with minimal interruption to the applications. And this snapshot can then be copied or moved to any other computing instance or to any storage services. So this is a key piece of technology that's part of our big memory uh, uh, software that we have developed. Now, what is big memory cloud? Is applying this technology and combining it with cloud automation software and cloud native orchestration platform so that we can capture the running state of a, any cloud application in any cloud instances. And then we can move these snapshots to cloud storage services of any kind and allow you to recover uh, this application if you lose the instance. It also allow you to move this application to another instance, either in the same cloud or even in a different cloud to continue that application from the point in time where you take the snapshot. So this is a crux of the big memory cloud technology that we are announcing today. Uh, the key keyword or key concept here is something we call app capsule. And this is the encapsulation of this application by using our big memory software technology combined with container orchestration so that this application can be easily suspended, recovered, transported, replicated from instance to instances across multi-cloud. So, so that's the technology. And by the way, uh, uh, Young and Eric will go into more details exactly how does this technology work uh, under the hood. And this is gonna offer something we believe is magical and never seen before for stateful applications on the cloud. So using this technology, let me explain how it can solve each of the three problems that I listed before. Uh, first, how can it lower a cloud cost? Now with spot instances, as we know, the problem is when the spot instance is being taken away, then you lose your application and you have to restart from two weeks ago. Uh, now with our app capsule technology, we can capture the application state periodically, essentially through this service we can provide to any applications called fault tolerance services. Essentially you can make every application fault tolerant to a computing instance being taken away from them. It would periodically take application snapshots and capture it in an application capsule. It can be moved to a storage service such as S3 or just a data volume. Um, and if your instance is being taken away, then this application capsule can be reloaded into a new instance um, and restart it from there. So you can always restart from the last good application capsule you have captured and you have saved onto a storage service. And so this way, it can enable any application to take advantage of the spot instances that offers up to 90% discount comparing to on-demand distances and deliver true and immediate cost savings to the uh, customers. So that's the first use case. And Ravi is gonna go into more details introducing this uh, uh, fault tolerance service that we can offer to lower the cloud cost. The second problem that I explained is the uh, uh, cloud bursting problem. Uh, and you can probably guess exactly how it will work. We would also 
when you need to burst this application to the cloud, we would uh, capture the uh, application state in an app capsule and move that app capsule to a cloud instance and uh, kind of hydrate it and have it start running again. And this way we can carry on from where it was left off with uh, you know, minimal uh, interruption to the, uh, to the applications. And this is a particular useful for long running analytical training, simulation, sequencing jobs. As your workload increases, you can basically employ the additional instances in the cloud to help. And these could be spot instances, this could be regular instances as well. And we can do that in a much more seamless way uh, than what's possible before. And by the way, the app capsule can not only capture the memory state, which is the value add from our snapshot technology, we can also coordinate with storage snapshot technology to capture the storage state at the same point in time so that the entire application state uh, can be preserved and, uh, and the application can continue. The third uh, uh, problem is uh, the cloud locking problem. And uh, uh, you know, stateful application has been notoriously not mobile uh, uh, to be able to move from one cloud to another or from one instance to the other. But using a similar mechanism that we can demonstrate that the application can be captured. Say it's running on AWS. We can capture the application in app capsule, move to Azure cloud and start the application there. And we can do that uh, in the other direction as well. So this really, decouples uh, a stateful application from the underlying cloud service, allow it to be moved uh, from cloud to cloud. And that really uh, liberated uh, the, the applications from the dependencies on the, uh, on the underlying cloud and truly enabled the multi-cloud mobility for all applications. Charles, sorry, I have another question. You yes. can take a snapshot of the memory and uh, it's not clear how you can reapply, you know, uh, to a different machine, the 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 same uh, uh, the same image. But but maybe we will uh, go into it later. But actually, there is the CPU. I mean, yeah. we, we are talking about registers. We are talking uh, yeah. about uh, cache currency in the in the in the in the CPU and many other you know pieces that. Uh, are, are just only there. I mean, how yeah. can you handle all of this? Enrico, uh, that was a great comment and great question. Um, the in-memory snapshot technology is not easy to do. And what you just mentioned, uh, just one of the difficulties of doing so, which is capturing the you know, CPU cache and register and all those data that's needed to restart the application that's not already in memory. So that's part of the problem we have solved as part of our uh, zero IO snapshot technology is as part of taking a snapshot, we are actually flushing all the CPU data into memory. Uh, we are also capturing all the, uh, you know, the networking socket data, the data that's also not already in memory and moving them into memory and allow us to capture those as well. So as part of the app capsule that we captured every bit of information that's needed for this application to be restarted somewhere else. Uh, it's like the whole package. It's like uh, I need to move from one house to the other. Not only I'm carrying everything on me, but I'm carrying other pieces that I needed for me to live comfortably in another house. And we package all that into this capsule and move it and restart it. And so all those data you described is captured as part of our service. Since you need to capture all of the application data, do you provide guidance on when to snapshot the certain applications we have tested with application because while it sounds awesome to Enrico's point right I see also a lot of possibilities where this could go horribly horribly wrong <laughs> uh, uh, yes uh, I think uh, maybe that's uh, true with any uh, uh, powerful technology that uh, that uh, uh, it could go wrong <laughs> and and uh, we are doing our job make sure it does not go wrong uh, but going to the specific question, uh, uh, I'll, I'll have a longer answer to your question. Uh, that there are two ways to apply our technology. Just if you purely look at from a technology perspective, uh, our technology can be applied transparently, meaning you do not have to change your application and you do not have to have any application cooperation 
and we can uh, make the snapshot of your application. Um, and, and this is done through various mechanisms that we have developed over the last four and a half years. Uh, but this, we do not make a blanket statement. This would work for all applications in the world. We do provide the application compatibility matrix that each of them we have tested in our lab, making sure this uh, snapshot works well, you know, outside of the application. And you can do that anytime and you can schedule it. You can do it on demand. And, and, and this, uh, the, all the application on our compatibility list, which is our website that we would uh, guarantee our support. Um, and then this is expanding list as well as the new need arise that we will test additional applications to making sure we support them. Now there's a second, there's a second method how our technology is used. We also have an SDK uh, with the API and that from the, if your application developer, that from within the application code, you can call our API to do your snapshot at the right time you want to do it. You know, for example, we have done so with a number of genomics uh, companies who are doing genomics sequencing and they have multi-staged uh, processing and they like to do a snapshot right at the end of each stage so that they can roll back to that stage and change the parameters and run again to compare results and so on and so forth. And we have no idea to know where they are in their processing. It's much better for them to know when to take the snapshot so that it fits their workflow the best. So for those developers, they can integrate with our technology through our SDK. So there are two ways, uh, either with or without uh, application cooperation that we can do this. And in this case, how we are applying to the cloud, you can also use either way, but we, uh, you know, by default, we have a service that does not require application cooperation that we can do it for you. And for the more advanced customers who like to do so, we have a SDK with API that you can use. So, so that's the explanation of uh, you know, the big memory cloud technology, the app capsule concept, uh, which is a combination of our snapshot technology with cloud native management platform. And so you might ask, when will this become available? Are this just a, a vaporware or a, a slideware? Or, or is this something that works today? Uh, so the product that is come out as part of is a new edition of our memory machine uh, product uh, called Cloud Edition. Memory machine product has been shipping for over a year. It was uh, launched in September last year. And I think soon after we did our first Tech Field Day uh, presentation to introduce the memory machine technology. And this is a natural evolution of that product, uh, but made it available to be deployable on the cloud. And this is in beta today. So anyone who's interested will be, uh, will be happy to hear from you to sign up for beta, to try out the cloud edition. The general availability is scheduled for Q1 of 2022. And this is essentially leveraging our transparent memory service in memory data service that was part of the memory machine product. Now adding the cloud integration and cloud native orchestration to that uh, platform to allow it to work well in the cloud to solve these cloud problems. All right, so, so in summary, uh, I'm gonna wrap up for my section and then leave it for Ravi and Yang to go into more details. Uh, you know, the, uh, the value add we have is we were ecstatic about a year ago to find uh, such compelling use cases in the cloud for the technology that we have been developing over the last four and a half years. You know, to be honest, when we start developing this technology, it was not designed for the cloud. We were trying to capture application state, try to utilize all the memory units out there you know, there's a new Optane memory that's coming out. There's a new CXL memory that's coming out that we like to tier them, virtualize them. And once they are disaggregated, we feel their need for data services such as Snapshot uh, to be useful on top of them. But we are so happy a year ago that to hear from customers some of these cloud problems, and then it turns out the technology that we have developed can offer a really unique and differentiated solution for them. So we are very happy to announce our cloud edition today. And we believe it's gonna pave the way to fulfill the cloud promises for thousands of stateful data-centric applications around the world. So that's an introduction of the big memory cloud.
technology. You gave some examples of potential use cases, AI, video rendering, financials. Is there a more, with this new cloud fault tolerant mm -hmm. solution, do you think there's a more generalized use case application for it beyond these very specific verticals? Sure. So these verticals are just examples of uh, a state flaps. Um, and, um, and so the, so in fact, you know, again, I'm not a marketing person. Uh, I, I, and I'm, as you can tell, English is not my first language. Uh, I've been looking for a word uh, that describing this class, the general word describing mm. this class of applications, and I have not found one. So if you could help me, uh, that's gonna be helpful. But I, I know the properties of these applications. So these tends to deal with a lot of state, um, you know, in uh, in memory or in the uh, uh, you know in the storage, and these uh, tends to be distributed. In, in fact, many of them are multi-node, which makes the problem even more difficult. They tends to be long running. You know, the, some of them are like a batched jobs, uh, and they would run for days and weeks. And uh, they many of them are not fault tolerant. Uh, meaning if you lose something, then you have to restart from the beginning. So they share these common characteristics. And I believe this is a growing class of application, especially, you know, we are, our world is increasingly data centric, where data is becoming bigger and faster. There are more and more applications like that. Uh, but I don't have that word <laughs> in terms of what application it is. So right now I'm using stateful application, which is a little maybe too geeky a word. <laughs> the, so, so open to entries if you can help us here. So as we look at this going into the cloud, is there for the clouds that you've got underneath of it or the instances that you would be maybe moving to, is there hard, specific hardware requirements for or instance requirements for what you're going to move to or from? Yeah. So in fact, we would support all uh, instances, uh, any CPU, any memory. Um, the requirement what we have is your destination instance should be at least as big as the source <laughs> instance <laughs> that we cannot you know, make something out of nothing here. So it must fit. Uh, but in terms of the source, we have no limitation uh, in terms of what type of CPU or memory uh, you have. And in fact, that's a good question because with memory machine, when I introduced last time, it was there to support DRAM and obtain memory. It will support CXL. And in this case, just DRAM is fine. So, it, so this snapshot would work, does not require any newer memory. So any regular instance would work. If you have obtained, that's even better, uh, but uh, it does not require, that does not require it. Hey, Charles, to, yes. to, to, uh, so uh, Optane was a, a big differentiator, I mean, uh, uh, for the solution because you, you had the possibility to take advantage of huge amounts of memory. Yes. In the cloud, this is not possible. I mean, not, not, it's not exposed in the same way. You don't have access to the physical environment most of the time. And the same goes for the CPU. So yeah. you, you told us that you can take a snapshot by flashing the registers and everything from the CPU, but actually you don't have access to the to the CPU in the cloud. Uh, we do not, you know, control the CPU. In fact, to be able to flush uh, the CPU is something you can do, uh, you know, through the operating system. That that you can force a, a flush of the CPU uh, by doing the right thing. It does not require anything special, you know, dealing with the hardware. And and like you said, the reason we do not restrict to any kind of memory is because still the, some of the newer hardware is not generally available across all the clouds yet. And our snapshot technology in particular does not depend on a particular memory. Now, if you do have obtained memory, uh, there is an added advantage, meaning the snapshot you take in memory will be persistent itself. Uh, and if you only have DRAM, the snapshot after you're taking the memory itself is, is volatile, meaning if you reboot your instance, you will lose that snapshot. So to make that work, we added the mechanism where after the snapshot is taken, that we would asynchronously in the background moving that snapshot to a persistent storage service, mm. S3 or data volumes. So there is a time that required, your application can run in parallel, but there'll be like, depending on the size of your memory state, it can take five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes for you to complete that copy for your snapshot to be persisted. Uh, 
so 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 obtain would uh, give you persistence without waiting for that period but that is okay even you have dram because anytime when that instance is being taken away or anytime you want to move the application to another instance uh, there's always a snapshot that has been uh, copied to storage and you can recover from that particular snapshot okay, already so then i have another question yeah do you take a snapshot of the entire memory space or just the application or you know what is used by that single application yeah so Because there are two different things both in size and both the problem that you know that there is an operating system that occupies some of this yeah. memory we are taking snap snapshot at the application granularity so for example if you are running uh two applications on in a same instance you have the choice to snapshot is one of them or the other or both. Uh, so, so we can decide to snapshot just one of the applications on, you know, in the VM or on the operating system. However, we not only capture the state associated with that application within the boundaries of the application, we also capture the other necessary state to allow you to restart that particular application. Some of those state is not within the memory boundary of that application. So we are intelligent to know what state is needed to be able to restart the application and encapsulate all of that into this app capsule. Okay. And Nico again. Yes. One idea, like I don't know what the future holds for you, but have you thought not read about this, combining the powers of memory snapshot with the backup provider? Has that been, yeah. that's something for later like, where do you see yourself in three years? But I see, I see a great potential for combining like your breaking memory technology with the more standard yes. snapshots on storage and such. Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 give us more time. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the last one you get to the poof. Like uh, there's so many different possibilities and what we show today is, is a very exciting uh, you know, possibility that we are making real. And I think besides this, there. There are many other exciting possibilities that we can make this technology to do. I think backup could be one of them, kind of some data application protection service. In some ways, this fault tolerance service is doing something similar there. There could be security related use cases where you can, you can have forensics of your applications in the past, uh, you know, point in time, which allow you to examine the differences and uh, and figure out what happened. Uh, so, but, you know, honestly, we are not security expert. And uh, so we have not really dived into that quite yet. But just by the, providing this base uh, foundational building block, which is app capsule uh, a snapshot, uh, we think a lot of very interesting things, things can happen using it on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more question, and then yep. I swear we'll go. At least, one more <laughs> the more the merrier. Um, I think the assumption so far is that we're running on virtual machines. With this, does the same technology also apply to either container hosts or containerized applications? Yes. The short answer is yes in both <laughs> texts. Uh, we, we actually uh, work, we have integrated uh, with containers and with uh, uh, Kubernetes and various Kubernetes based uh, a platform such as OpenShift, Tenzu, mm -hmm. and others. Uh, so this would allow the orchestration of containerized applications. And uh, we can take snapshot at pods, uh, pod granularity and, and move that essentially uh, from, uh, from cloud to cloud. And this can run inside of a virtual machine. You can run the, you know, these uh, or container, containers inside of VM. This can also run on bare metal, basically just run uh, these containerized apps on bare metal as well.